Hey Pretty Girl Club, so today we are going to be talking about pretty girl trauma coping mechanisms. So I've been talking about this subject a lot on my channel and I know that some of the things that I name in here are going to be very relatable because a lot of you guys have talked about these things in the Discord or in the Patreon. Be sure to join that if you haven't already. But a coping mechanism is something that you do when maybe you've been gaslit or maybe people have accused you of having a superiority complex or thinking you're better. And so you just go into these different copes in order to avoid the emotional pain that comes with embracing who you are. So the first coping mechanism is denying that you are mixed race. So you don't talk about your mom's side of the family. You don't talk about who your grandma is. You don't talk about your cousins or the fact that you are Creole or the fact that you're biracial, you're multiracial, maybe you're Blasian. Um, this is a coping mechanism that I have used in the past and that's because People have made comments like, oh, you're making being mixed your personality, or no one gives a fuck, or why are you randomly bringing that up when no one asked? And I've noticed that some people, um, because they have an inferiority complex, anytime you mention your racial background, they get offended if your racial background is different than theirs. And that's not your problem, but I have noticed that a lot of us mixed race people, um, we have had a tendency to sometimes deny being mixed or we will just one drop ourselves into unambiguous blackness. And especially after people try to gaslight you and then they'll try to be like, oh, well, white people see you as still black as if you should uh, define your identity based on how white people see you. Or they'll be like, oh, um, the police, a racist police officer is only going to see you as black as if you should define your identity based off of what a racist police officer thinks. Or people will be like, oh, back in the slave days, you would have still been a slave, as if I should define my identity based on slavery or based on what my slave classification would have been. Um, those are all very ignorant talking points, but I know that some of us, when we are not quite confident yet in our mixed heritage, it can cause us to go into these coping mechanisms. Another thing people will say is, you don't speak XYZ language, you don't speak French, you don't speak Spanish, you don't speak Tagalog, you don't speak Hindi. I don't know if it's called Hindi, but the language that they speak in some Indian cultures. Um, so sometimes people will try to invalidate you because you don't fit the cultural stereotypes of your background. And so that can cause you to have a sense of trauma where it's like, okay, fine, I guess I can't embrace that because I'm not, I wasn't raised with the culture. By the way, that's one of the most ignorant talking points I've ever heard. So you're telling me that if you're biracial, if your dad dies and he's black, now you are no longer black because you're family member has passed away and like you weren't raised with that culture what about the people who are adopted are do they not count like does their dna mean nothing now because they weren't raised with either parent so that's always been an ignorant talking point but i know that can cause people to kind of deny one side of their family or they don't want to come off as like being racist against black people so they will pretend like their own mother doesn't exist but let's get back into a lot of the pretty girl traumas specifically so i know that one trauma that i've had personally uh, comes from my christian background so that has to do with makeup I was always raised around people who they would heavily shame women who wear makeup. They would talk about how in the Bible it says that like you should not be uh, braiding your hair and wearing all of these jewels to try to get attention. So I was raised around people who had more of a Christian, more of this red pill mindset of if you're wearing makeup, you're trying to receive sexual attention from a guy or you were trying to like be a Jezebel or be seductive. And so for me, that caused me to like be afraid of wearing certain makeup items. Another thing that happened to me in college was I've always been into sparkles. So sparkly eyeshadow, sparkly nail polish, sparkly clothing, like you know those little uh, dresses that you wear on New Year's Eve or like the sparkly skirts and stuff like that. I used to be into that stuff, but people would say that like I'm doing too much. Sometimes girls who were hating on me, they would be like, oh, why are you wearing that? You're just trying to draw attention to yourself. You just want everyone to look at you. You're trying to outshine people. So similar talking points to what you see on black women empowerment channels. People would accuse me of trying to outshine others. Or people would sometimes try to imply that I was being too feminine, like being hyper feminine by wearing sparkles or by wearing pink. So 
it gave me a complex about sparkles in particular. I remember I used to carry a lot of little sparkly wallets or a sparkly purse or I would have like a sparkly phone case or something random and um, I got shamed and so it made me feel insecure. Like one of my coping mechanisms was I no longer wore sparkles. So no sparkly eyeshadows, just nothing sparkly. I began to change my wardrobe and not dress in the style that I wanted to dress in so that I could blend in more because people accused me of standing out too much and they viewed it as I'm thinking I'm better or trying to like flex on other people. Another uh, coping mechanism I had was about the brand Mix Chicks. So you know that hair care brand Mix Chicks, right? So I started off wearing that hair care brand, but I went to an HBCU. I was surrounded by a lot of pro-black people or whatever. And a lot of the girls, they would shame the brand Mix Chicks. And they would say that like, you know, it's basically a texturist um, brand and that they are trying to exclude black women. You know, they're trying to exclude the Afrocentric hair textures. I got told similar things about Miss Jessie's as well, that they were basically texturist and that they were supporting, um, you know, anti-black hairstyles and stuff like that. So I remember not even using hair products that worked well for my hair because I didn't want to be accused of being a texturist or um, thinking my texture is better. And also with the whole mix thing, I didn't want people to think that I was making being mixed my personality by using products called Mix Chicks and having it in my dorm room or having it in the shower or, you know, always carrying that with me when I'm doing my hair. So I would not use those products. I would attempt to use all of the same exact hair products that the other girls were using, even if those products didn't really work as well on my hair. This whole episode is supposed to be about how a lot of us, we tend to dumb down our beauty or we dumb down certain qualities about ourselves because we don't want to trigger other people and also other people tend to target us or they tend to like talk shit basically about when we dress up or when we do our hair a certain way versus when other girls do it because it stands out more. So me not purchasing mixed chicks, not buying Miss Jessie's, not wearing the curly pudding, that was me trying to... I guess you could say humble myself. It was like a strange and ineffective way of trying to somehow humble myself or show that like, oh no, I'm not different. I'm just like everybody else. I wear the same hair products as everyone else. But another thing that I used to do, and it was like a form of dumbing down my beauty. So I used to like wearing big earrings and I used to wear big sparkly earrings in particular. So I would go to like Macy's or Forever 21. You know those stores you can, you can go to in the mall and get that costume jewelry. So I used to love that costume jewelry when I was in high school, like the big shiny earrings and stuff, the big chandeliers. So I remember one time I went to church. I went to the church uh, youth service. So I grew up in a mega church. So the youth church was really big, like 500 people were a part of the youth church. So it wasn't something small. Um, but I remember I was walking down there and there were some kids that they had bust in from the inner city, no, no shade towards them, but they were African American kids that came from the quote unquote hood. And they had, they would bring kids in from like the teen shelters and stuff to come to the church service there and like have fun or whatever. So some of those kids were there at the church that day and I was just walking down the hall like looking cute or whatever and then this one black guy, this unambiguous black guy, he was like, oh, she's a dirty girl. And then people were like, what? And then he was like, yeah, she's a dirty girl. Look at her. Oh my God, she's such a whore. Like he was trying to call me a, a dirty like Jezebel type of person. And then I was just not paying attention. I was like, okay, maybe he's not talking about me or maybe he's mixing, mixing me up with someone else. And then the next time he saw me later that night, he was like, you shouldn't be wearing those big earrings in church. Nobody that's like trying to serve God would be wearing big earrings like that. And then everybody's like, ooh, you know, in the background. So I remember that was a form of trauma to me. So after that, I never wore big earrings, not just in church, but just in general. I was no longer wearing big earrings because I didn't want people to think that I was trying to be like a hoe or trying to be fast is what they would call it sometimes. But that was another way of dumbing down my beauty. I mean, I'm tall, I have a long neck, I have long hair, so big earrings go really well with like my, my head shape and stuff and they look cute sometimes. But 
because of that and because I guess I was standing out too much or I was being sexualized or I associated those earrings, big earrings, I associated that with being sexual, um, that caused me to no longer embrace that part of my beauty because my best friend, she wasn't really my best friend, she was more like a friend of me, um, she was also black or whatever, she would make comments about my hoop earrings that I would wear sometimes and she'd be like, the bigger the O, oh, the bigger the ho. So that discouraged me from wearing the types of earrings that I wanted to wear. And that was a coping mechanism. I did not want to be seen as, oh, I'm trying to be sexy or whatever. And so I was dumbing down my jewelry styles. Another way that I used to dumb down my beauty um, was with hair color. So I specifically never wore highlights of any kind until I was almost 30 years old. And this is because of my natural phenotype and skin tone. I know that if I wear light hair colors, I can pass, meaning I will basically not have the black experience anymore, for lack of better words. I mean, I still consider myself to be like, looking black. My phenotype is more like a Beyonce or somebody like that, like an Aaliyah or something. But just imagine, actually Beyonce, when she puts on that super platinum blonde hair, you know, she starts to look extremely ambiguous. And I've noticed that I I have that phenotype as well, especially since I have freckles on my face and stuff. You know, that's going to make me look even more ambiguous. So I always felt a sense of guilt when it came to um, wearing hair highlights, lighter hair colors, or even uh, playing around with colored contacts and stuff. I always felt a sense of guilt because I would hear other girls who were unambiguous, they would talk shit about mixed or lighter skinned women who would wear high highlights. They'd be like, oh, she's just trying to look even more light skinned, or she's just trying to, trying to look white, or she just doesn't want to look black. She doesn't want to uh, blend in with black people. She's trying to escape the black experience, basically. That's kind of what the women around me were implying. And so they would uh, make it as if wearing highlights was a, a form of flexing your skin tone or flexing your ambiguity and kind of thinking you're better, um, trying to stand out. Out, um, trying to kind of like be better than dark-skinned black women or trying to you know just not look like them or look as far away from the black phenotype as possible that is the main talking point that I was kind of around especially at an HBCU or living in these really big cities with a lot of unambiguous people and so I always felt a sense of guilt when it came to wearing hair highlights so I never did I never even uh, tried them out I never tried out any extensions with like brown or blonde or red or any other colors in them because I knew that people would uh, make comments on it and so that was another way of dumbing down my beauty Another way that I used to do this was by not wearing weaves, not wearing wigs, or basically any fake hair at all. And this is because, number one, I grew up in the early 2000s where most girls wore their hair natural and they would have kind of that short, relaxed hairstyle. And so not only was my hair already very long, but it was also the texture of it was very silky to where a lot of people were like, oh, like, is she getting a bunch of perms and like trying to put some weave in the perm or something? Like, how is she getting your hair like that. So people used to call me out for my hair all the time. They would make my hair a big deal as well as my phenotype and my background and stuff. But like especially my hair, I felt like the people I was around were more obsessed with hair than skin because a lot of the people there kind of had the same skin tone as far as like when I went to an HBCU or when I was in these predominantly black spaces. So it's like, yes, you already stand out. So bringing up your skin tone, that's that's too obvious. People used to point out each other's hair. So they would separate the dark skins by, you know, which one has the quote unquote good hair and which one doesn't. So anyway, I grew up with this complex about how natural hair is better than um, fake hair because if you wear fake hair you're trying to be European you were trying to be more white that is why you were wearing the weaves or at least that's kind of what I was told by a lot of unambiguous black men in particular too like if you're wearing uh, fake hair you know you're trying to be more white you're trying to blend in with white people by having your hair straight or you're also doing that same thing kind of being this Jezebel trying to attract sexual attention that's why you want hair going down your back and you know when your hair is really long it's kind of drawing attention down towards towards your butt area and so that is you know you're trying to get attention from men basically so I used to always feel a sense of not being able to express myself when it came to hair extensions and wigs and 
all of these different styles because I always felt like, oh, I, I get enough attention or whatever, so why would I try to show off or get even more attention? Basically, I almost viewed every beauty enhancement as a form of you're trying to get attention, and that's why you're wearing it. You want the male gaze, you want guys to look at you, or you're trying to be white. And so this was true for me, especially with wigs in particular, so I never even tried on a wig until I was almost 30 years old. I also couldn't wear my hair down when I was growing up because I come from, so I'm mainly non-denominational, that was my main background, but I also came from a Baptist background. So wearing my hair down, I couldn't do that. Wearing it pressed and straightened, I couldn't do that because you know, that looks too grown or whatever. Even wearing it down and curly, same thing, that looks too grown. So the way that I was raised and the environment that I was around was basically an environment of the more beauty you have, the more sexual attention you're going to get, and the more sexual attention you get, the more likely you are to like be raped or attract a perv or become pregnant or whatever. So a lot of the adults in my life, they when they said these talking points about kind of dumbing down your beauty, they were trying to say it in a way as if they were attempting to protect the girls. Like, oh, you know, you're already going to get a lot of attention. So like, you know, that's pretty enough. Why do you need more? Why do you need to wear eyeshadow? Isn't your face already pretty? Basically, it's like you either hated yourself and wanted to change yourself. That's why you're wearing makeup. It's either from self-hate or because you want sexual attention or you're trying to be white with the hair weaves. Another area where I used to dumb down my beauty in terms of makeup was wearing foundation that was way too fucking dark. I mean, just my face was just straight up orange. And this is because, once again, so many people would gaslight about the whole you're trying to be white talking point. And I've noticed that people don't usually give that same energy to dark skin, unambiguous women. But it seems like whenever you have a lighter complexion or you look... I don't know, kind of more like a Beyonce phenotype or like Rihanna, you know, that's more my skin tone range, more like this kind of yellow bone skin tone range, then it's almost as if whatever you do, people are going to try to police it and accuse you of trying to be white or trying to look more white because technically, yeah, you do look more white. I mean, if you're already my skin tone or if you're already like Rihanna's skin tone and then you put on blonde hair, yeah, you are going to technically look more white as opposed to if you put on some locks or something like that. But another thing that I used to do to dumb down my beauty was when it came to lipstick in particular. Um, I did not feel comfortable wearing lipstick, especially red lipstick, because so I went to a Christian school and the teacher would talk about how red, the color red is like what the hookers would wear and, you know, they were trying to represent what a vagina looks like when it has an orgasm, like it turns red. And if you wear red, you're trying to attract sexual attention. So wearing red on your lips meant that you were trying to make your lips look like vagina lips. So I definitely had a complex about that and also just drawing attention to my lips in general. Um, I would feel self-conscious because it's like, oh wow, you know, wearing lipstick is like all of the ladies on TV and stuff, all of the video vixens or the women who were technically hoes, those women would usually have on lipsticks. And so I kind of felt guilted or kind of felt banned from wearing lipstick because it was like, oh, if you're already pretty, why would you try to go and put on some lipstick? Now you're trying even more hard to be pretty. I, I just viewed it as being a try hard because those are the types of women that I was around. Like they would make comments like that, like, oh, you're trying too hard. Or a lot of people would say, you're doing too much. Basically, anytime I was dressed cute, it's you're doing too much. Anytime I would put on lipstick, it's you're doing too much. So I didn't want to do too much. And this created a complex or almost like a fear of wearing lipstick, especially red lipstick. And so the way that I started to get over this fear, by the way, was I just started practicing wearing it again. So I found this lip kit in my cabinet not too long ago, like a few months ago, and I started wearing red lipstick just every single day, just for me. And just to um, kind of break that trauma in my mind and to remind myself, like, no, this is my body. I get to wear whatever makeup I want. I get to draw as much attention to my beauty as I want. I can enjoy my beauty however I look. You know, I can enjoy whatever type of beauty I want to represent today. So that's a tip that I have for you guys. If you are traumatized about a certain thing or you have done 
you have dumbed down your beauty in a certain area, one way you can get over that trauma is you can just start practicing doing that exact thing. Like, okay, once a month, I am going to wear red lipstick. Or once a week for three weeks in a row, I'm going to wear red lipstick and see how I feel. I remember at first when I put on the red lipstick, I was like, oh my God, everybody's going to be staring at me. Oh my gosh, people are going to, co they're going to comment on it and be like, why are you wearing red lipstick? And that was just kind of like the PTSD from the past or whatever. But no, nobody said, why are you wearing red lipstick? In fact, I got compliments. So no, it was nothing negative happened. But I do think that we as the Pretty Girl Club need to break that habit of constantly trying to dumb ourselves down because we're trying to prove something to somebody. We're trying to prove how humble we are. We're trying to prove that we're not conceited. We're trying to prove that we don't think we're better. Or at least in my case, that's how I felt. I was trying to prove that like, hey, I'm just like everyone else. I'm no different than everyone else. But by doing that, I was getting rid of my individuality. I was getting rid of my own unique, beautiful qualities because of other people's inferiority complexes or other people's insecurities. It's like, just because the other girls around me weren't confident enough to wear red lipstick or they didn't think that they looked good in red lipstick. Because I've heard some people make colorist comments too, um, trying to say that only people that have my skin tone can pull off red lipstick. So maybe some of the women who made negative comments, maybe they were speaking from uh, feeling like they couldn't pull off red lipstick or bright lipstick at all. So maybe they were just projecting because of their own traumas. But other people's traumas don't have to be your traumas. It doesn't mean that you don't feel uh, compassion and stuff, but it's like just because you feel uncomfortable wearing highlights or you feel uncomfortable wearing red lipstick or makeup or sparkles, that doesn't mean that I have to now feel uncomfortable with those things. And I also feel like some people just tell you those things because they view you as competition. So maybe they are still going to wear red lipstick. Because oftentimes the people that would tell me, oh, you, you don't need a weave, you don't need makeup, you don't need this. The main people who would say that would be the girls who are wearing all the weaves and the makeups and the like long nails or whatever, the short dresses, showing cleavage. They were doing all of it. But they were telling me I didn't need it. So I do feel like some women try to use it as a competitive strategy so they can have a competitive advantage against you. They'll be like, oh, you don't need a wig. Your hair's already long. And then they'll come out and like slay with the wig that looks better than your natural hair. Or they'll try to like, you know, they're they're just trying to have something that they can one up you with. Like, haha, she just has to wear the same black curly bun for the next six months as a protective style. And I get to change my hair every single day. You know, I really do feel like some women if they have uh, a bad intention towards you, they are thinking like that. But another way that I used to um, dumb down my beauty, like I used to have a complex about wearing bright colors in general. Um, and that's because I feel like a lot of light skins can look really good in, in bright colors. I, I had a uh, complex about the color yellow in particular, like the super bright colors, yellow, orange, the very, very bright neon colors, like I'm talking the traffic cone colors, um, all those colors look really good on me. But I always had a complex about wearing those colors because I felt like that's kind of like flexing your skin tone or like trying to show how bright of a color you can wear or trying to show off like, yeah, this is how bright I can uh, do my clothes and like I still look bright in these clothes. Or at least that's kind of how I took it because when I went to an HBCU, um, I did hear a lot of people say, oh, that color is too bright for that person. And usually the person they would talk about would be a darker skinned person. And so then I do feel like because I was around a lot of people who would make comments based on skin color, it kind of gave off the impression that if you are light skinned and you can pull off the super light colors, like the light blues or the yellows or the orange or whatever, the red, um, then you're kind of flexing it or you're kind of showing off how light you are. That's how I felt as well about the highlights, like wearing highlights and wearing blonde and it literally looks really good on you and just blends in perfectly, just melts into your hair perfectly. Um, that is showing off your phenotype or it's showing off how natural you look and how effortless you look with those uh, light colors on because it already matches your light colored skin tone. So that is something that I used to have a trauma about and it caused me to dumb down my beauty. But one of my goals actually for this summer, I am going to wear yellow once a week. I am going to, when I get my summer wardrobe, I'm going to get some yellow sundresses. I'm going to get a yellow crop top. I'm probably even going to get a yellow workout set, like a matching bra with like the matching pants. 
and I'm going to go out and I'm going to slay because I'm tired of not enjoying my phenotype and not enjoying my beauty because other people see it as, oh, I'm just trying to flex. And then the main people who will say you're trying to flex, they'll be trying to flex themselves all the time. So it's like, why is it okay for everybody else to flex except if you're naturally pretty or if you're naturally seen as privileged in some way? Uh, we're not doing that here in 2024. But those are some of my pretty girl traumas. I'm sure you guys can relate to some of those. Has that ever happened to any of you guys? Have you ever felt like you can't wear a certain thing because it's going to draw too much attention to you? Maybe it's like a bodycon dress. That's another thing, by the way, that I uh, felt uncomfortable wearing was like bodycon dresses, anything looking sexy, basically. Bodycon dresses, mini skirts, um, stuff that shows my belly button, anything like low cut or backless. But what do you ladies think? Has this ever happened to you? Let me know in the comments section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.